started. Uh, my name is Amy Doherty. I work uh, full-time at the league office and one of the activities I oversee is girls tennis. Um, congratulations to all of you for qualifying either a team or singles players or doubles players. Um, this is being recorded, so if you you know can't stay for the whole time, or somebody comes into your office to talk to you, you uh, you can always pull it up on the ads or coaches dashboard later on. All right, Shannon, go ahead. Um, we we're not going to cover everything you need to know in this meeting. Um, just going over a few highlights, and then if you haven't yet reviewed some of these documents or all of the documents, we request that you do so. Uh, right after this meeting or as soon as you can. Um, we'll talk about the participating school guide, some info about venue access, uh, some couple reminders about relevant rules, uh, some stuff about seating, ticketing, and media. As I mentioned, we're not going to cover everything here. Uh, so make sure you cover the participating school guide both ADs and coaches, please go through that carefully. Uh, review the rules and policies for tennis. Review the USTA Friends at Court Code, which is essentially our tennis rules. Um, and all of those can be found on the ADs and the coaches dashboards. Coaches, if you have trouble accessing your dashboard, your AD should be able to help you. Uh, they are in that dashboard daily. Uh, and just a reminder, we want everybody to review that. We know first-time coaches are usually pretty good at pouring over it, but even for those of you who've been at this tournament 20 times and you think you know everything, um, you probably do, but please still review all of the material. All right, um, I will introduce Shannon Foreman, my assistant. She's been, um, I think you've been hearing from her probably more than me on email. I'm going to have Shannon cover the next few slides. Good morning, everybody. Um, congratulations on either your team or your individuals making it in. I just wanted to cover a little bit on the dashboard stuff that Amy had talked about. The slide that's currently up um, is shows portions of your coaches and AD dashboard on where to find those documents. So if you go to the league website, get logged in, go to sports and activities. Um, we use this for multiple of our events. So you know, yours will have the girls tennis part on here. Um, and this is the section you should see all of it. There's an activities resources side and there's a state tournament resources side. So there's stuff posted on both sections of that. That will be helpful. That's where that participating school guide is. That's where the friend at court is posted. Um, if there's something that's not there that you're looking for, let us know. But everything for the tournament that you should need should be in that location. Um, from the front page of the website, if you click on activities and click on girls tennis, this is one place that you can go to, to send your families. Um, all of that information is here. So the, you click on the girls tennis, the schedule has been posted, the spectator guide of what they can, can't bring into each of the facilities, both at baseline and at Reed Sweat and inner city. Um, there's a link for apparel, which we'll see in a little bit of what our vendor is going to be selling, different streaming options, a link to the bracket um, that they can see, and how to download the souvenir program that is going to be there. So tournament programs, as if some of you have been there in the last few years, we do online programs only. So here's the link. Um, the mshsl.org backslash girls tennis is where you can download the program that'll have the bracket. There is a printable option that you can do if you're somebody or your families want to print that off, but there will be no physical paper copies at the tournament at all um, for you to print out there. These are what the apparel options um, will be. They will be selling them at each of the venues as well as online, but that's just a look at what they're gonna have there for you. Um, here's a little bit of information about that. On site, they are cashless. So just one thing to mention to your families, if they do wanna get any kind of apparel, um, debit card, credit card only, 
They're going to be at both venues all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, but just in the morning on Thursday, once individuals start and they will not be there at all on Friday. Um, you can also order online. Signature Concepts is our vendor. The website is right there. Um, different things. You will have to pay shipping if you do it online versus if you buy it at the venue. Oh, yeah. We really recommend doing your tickets ahead of time and doing it online for ticketing. Um, adult prices are 13, student prices are eight. We go through hometown ticketing at class A. It'll be through the U of M, but the link is on our website. So you can click at tickets at the top or you can go to that girl's tennis page and there's a ticketing link there as well. Uh, we do do streaming. It will be for championship days only. Um, we go through nspn.tv is our streaming network. So you can see the price if you want to do a yearly subscription or a subscription for a month. And Tim, I think you're on here with us if you want to cover the media portion. Shannon, did you make Tim a co-host? I don't have that. Yeah, I'm He's getting, I have to okay. find him quick. Okay. Tim will make you a co-host in just a second. While she's working on that, I will chime in about the apparel. One of our colleagues was at our vendor's office uh, yesterday, and she said the tennis, the crew neck is really cool, and the, the tennis ball on it actually has like a cool texture. So, and that was coming from a non-tennis person. So, um. all right, I think I'm on. You are, Tim. Thank you. All right. All right. No, thank you. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. If you're attending this meeting uh, right now at this point of the season, that means you've had a terrific year. And congratulations uh, to all of you for that. The league looks forward to hosting you at next week's uh, tennis state tournaments. Uh, just, a, just a reminder for any of the administrators that are joining us today on this call, the student media program is in effect for the team portion of the girls tennis state tournament. Uh, all credential applications must flow through you as the AD. And uh, don't forget, just make sure that your, uh, your high school is uh, approved as an organization and then you can designate uh, those individuals. Our parameters are two students uh, that can be uh, come from each member school. And then a faculty advisor needs to be on site uh, with those two students and new this year is a reminder is that the uh, faculty advisor cannot be an AD because typically ADs have their hands full already with with on site duties. So this needs to be another designee from uh, your school. Um, the, a reminder, the team tennis is only not not for the individual as it relates to the student media. Media information is, is now being compiled and you will find the approved media and uh, your approved student media uh, on, on that um, approved media list that's on the media page. Uh, you, can, you can apply for a student media credential all the way up until Monday night at seven o'clock. Those uh, approved media lists will be at each site. I will also be at each site uh, during the week, so I look forward to working with you. Uh, we do have some parameters as it relates to where uh, student media can be and the professional media, and we will share that uh, on-site information with them. With that, Amy, back to you. Thank you, Tim. And Laura, you I'm sorry, Laura's not with us. Shannon, you can go ahead and advance the slide. Uh, Okay, I'm going to just talk about how seating worked. If you haven't yet noticed, we did, the brackets went live this morning. You can access them through the MSHSL website or through tennis reporting if you're on there more frequently. Uh, and that's for team, both teams and individuals, uh, both singles and doubles. Um, I was able to sit in on the seating meeting yesterday. Um, and just to inform you, the, there is a document on your AD and, cash, AD and coach dashboard that talks all about how the seating process works. I was listening to the committee and I'm frankly, I, I'm, I don't have a horse in the race, right? I don't, you know, I've, I of course know all your school names, but 
to me, I don't know what school is good and what individuals are good. Um, and I can say that listening into them, they really did a very thorough job talking through all of their decisions. Um, of course, some of the decisions are hard. Um, I always just say, you know what, this is this is why we play the match, right? So if you got somebody got seated fourth and you don't like fourth, well, then, you know, play the match and, and show us that you should have been first. Uh, the top five uh, singles and doubles are placed into the bracket. And then the remaining 11 are placed by lottery. Um, we do usually have to tell you that um, because we seed and we might have two seated players from the same section, sometimes that means uh, there might be two players from the same section on the same side of the bracket, but it actually worked out um, this fall that that doesn't have to take place, but I kept it in there. So I would have this next time for my next meeting. All right, go ahead. Okay, a couple of venue specific bits of information. Um, the Class A tournament is at Reed Sweat, also known as Inner City Tennis. Um, the site manager there will be Eric Inglis. Uh, he will be assisted by Joe Boyer and Nancy Manderfeld. Um, Andrea Swanberg is usually there too. Um, her attendance might be spotty just this just this fall, but you'll see her back in the spring. Uh, vehicle parking, if you haven't been there before, there is a small lot in front, uh, limited parking. They also advise and want us to remind you not to leave visible items in vehicles. Those of us who live in the city are used to this. I live in St. Paul and I never leave, you know, a backpack in my car because it's just, you know, welcoming somebody to break my window and take my backpack. But I know some of you might not live in the city and might not have this habit ingrained. So please tell your uh, parents and fans, just don't leave anything visible in the car. Um, and then they're they're going to, most people will be parking on the street. Um, there's lots of street parking, but they might need to walk three minutes. When you get there at class A, um, you'll identify yourself uh, with the people who are selling tickets, and then they'll direct you to the MSHSL staff table, which is off to the left. Um, and that's where you'll pick everything up. And in, a, and in a few slides, Shannon will tell you everything that there is to pick up there. Um, Eric and Joe, I know you're on here. Is there anything? Well, Eric, you're usually at the other site. But Joe, do you think there's anything site specific that you want to add? If so, feel free to unmute yourself. I, I don't think so. I think you've covered, you know, the, the parking thing, right? Yeah. Um, and again, I wouldn't leave wherever you are, at baseline or at, at inner city, I wouldn't leave anything visible in my car. And um, again, you may have to walk, like you said, Amy, a little bit if you park on the street. Um, if you do have a bigger vehicle, I definitely would not try and go into the parking lot in front or you're going to be either stuck in there or you're not going to find a spot. But other than that, I think you've covered what, what needs to be said for sure. Thank you. And yeah, that's a good reminder. I have a Toyota RAV4, which is not big by any means. And there, there are spots that I can't get my car into. So yes, if you have a family sized SUV or a truck, I wouldn't even try it. Um, now, if you have a van and you're just dropping the kids off, certainly you can circle through there. But otherwise, um, yeah, don't. you might not even want to try if you have something much bigger than a RAV4. All right, Shannon, you want to go ahead to the next one? And specific for baseline, which is also U of M, and this is where the class AA tournament will be. Um, the site manager is Rick Engelstead, and he will be assisted by Kua and Brandon from St. Paul Como. Uh, vehicle parking, I mean, it's a, it's a bit up to you, but um, the 4th Street ramp is ideal, or lot 37 is behind the venue. Um, there's also parking meters, but um, frankly, I think just using that ramp is easiest. I don't, I'm sure it's not a formal name, but I just consider it the Mariucci ramp. So yeah, if you're picturing, um, if you're picturing campus, if that helps ring a bell any, um, that's what I call it. And there is bus parking, uh, Southeast 25th and U of M transit way. Um, Shannon, do we have that, 
we have that in the participating school guide, right? Yeah, there's a direct link um, to both of them. So there'll be a map at Read Sweat and then the baseline one will show you directly on their school map where it's located. Awesome, thank you. Um, I know it's hard to picture all that U of M stuff ahead of time. So feel free to check out that map. Uh, you will enter on the 4th Street entrance. Uh, team check-in will be at that same 4th Street entrance. And here's an important reminder, no outside food and beverage. Please tell your fans. Um, they're not going to be checking the bags of the players for all of this. I mean, they have a right to look at the bags if they have any suspicions. However, um, the security is not directed to go through every player's bag, but Fans especially need to remember they can't bring in their caribou. They can't bring in outside food. Um, and that I know is frustrating for some people, but as long as we are going to use the U of M venue, we have to follow those rules. And being a, you know, a humongous entity, uh, there, there's a lot of, I don't want to say red. Yeah, I'm going to just say red tape involved. And if the concession stand is open, they don't want people to bring in stuff. So um, that's just the deal there. Um, I see Rick and Kua are here. Do either of you, or Eric is usually at that site. Do any of you have anything to add about AA? Yeah, um, a couple things. One, with the bags, we the boys actually did a tremendous job in the spring, and we kept all the bags down in the bottom hallway or down in the locker rooms. Um, they don't want player bags up in the sitting area simply because of hazard for people tripping or if there's an emergency and we need to – evacuate or anything it just causes a lot of issues so um, we want kids to put their keep their stuff down there and the other thing for logistic purposes court seven in the back will be the sitting area for watching courts eight and nine I talked to the U of M this morning to kind of see what the courts are so court eight will be where we'll end up putting our four singles on and court nine can be for our alternate kind of kids or We'll use court nine if we have to, if matches run late on other things. But just so you know, that's kind of the logistics of things. So with the no food and beverage, that means no coolers brought in. You know, they're, they're going to be pretty strict at that. So just be aware of that. Questions? And you can put questions in chat too. I don't think there's anything in there yet, but feel free to put anything in chat and one of us will answer it or often an experienced coach pops in and answers something. Um, so now, now the next one I'm gonna talk about is for, this is for both sites. So tune back in, uh, A and AA both, uh, sp talking specifically about the team tournament, the Tuesday, Wednesday part of the tournament. When you do check in, um, your official squad designated by the MSHSL Board of Directors can be up to 15 players. So your 10 players and your five pre-designated alternates. Um, as the official squad, two coaches are official, meaning if, if and when you medal, you'll get two medals for coaches. You won't get a third. Um, but we have worked out that that third coach can be allowed admittance and allowed on the court. Um, that was not the case last year and it, it caused quite a bit of frustration. Um, but anybody additional has to purchase tickets. So if you have a fourth coach, a fifth coach, a sixth coach, I beg of you to tell them ahead of time, they'll have to purchase tickets unless they get one from your AD. Um, frankly, our people at the who are taking tickets don't get enough money to have to hear some of those coaches complain because nobody had told them. Um, and that did happen last year and, and, you know, they get frustrated. So if you can tell them ahead of time, then that shouldn't be an issue. Um, and that also would apply to any JV players, even if they come with you, um, they weren't complaining last year, but you know, those JV players, even if they come with you on the bus would need to purchase tickets. Um, I know last year at baseline, you know, there were some moms who just bought them for all the kids and then they just stood there, um, you know, and swiped their phone. And that is absolutely fine. Um, but they would have to purchase tickets. Um, all of those coaches who you're designated, designating must have completed the coach education requirements. 
If you're a coach here and that none of that is ringing a bell, please talk to your AD right after this meeting. Uh, now back for the those who are in the individual competition, the players who qualified for individuals. Oh, sorry, go back one. I was just gonna do that last line. Yeah, thanks. The players who qualified for individuals are part of the tournament, and so they get free admittance for the whole tournament. So if they qualify to singles and doubles and they're not there as part of a team and they want to come watch team, they can just check in um, and identify themselves and they can come on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, to scope things out. All right, go ahead again, Shannon. Um, and actually, Shannon, do you want, oh no, I'll have you do that in a second. I ignore that brief, that brief thought I had. Um, individual players, um, also two coaches, the third would be allowed admittance on court if needed. Um, now we're hoping you don't necessarily need three coaches on the court if you have one singles player. Um, so let's try to uh, work that out so we don't have too many people on the court. Um, no teammates on the court. And I'm really pointing that out because some athletes feel at home there because they've been there all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, but come Thursday and Friday, if they were part of the team, but they did not qualify as an individual, they need to be up cheering. They can get in free, but they would need to sit in the spectator section. So they'd get in free, but they can't be down on the courts with those who qualified for the individual tournament. All right, let's do the next one. Um, okay, and I'm going to have Shannon jump in because Shannon is the one who has been packing your packets. So just so you know, when you get to the tournament, um, you're going to check in with the table and you're going to get a packet. Um, Shannon, you want to talk about those? Yeah. So once you check in at the table, your teams are all going to pick up a white large envelope. Inside that envelope are your souvenir bag tags. Um, for coaches. So it's going to be official roster. So whatever you put on your roster for players, whether it's all 15, 13, 12, that's how many are going to be in there, plus the two coaches um, tags as well. So we go off that official roster that you put in. Um, there's also going to be the wristbands. They're going to be purple this year. Um, if you have an individual that's playing on Thursday or Friday, that's included already. So you are not going to recheck in to get an envelope on Thursday if you have a team that's in the tournament as well. So they're not going to get a secondary set of wristbands. I recommend your players put them on a backpack or something that's going to travel back and forth with them. They do not have to wear them um, while they're playing. I recommend if you're going to be watching other matches and you're going to not have your tennis bag with you, your actual racket case backpack works the best. Um, coaches, you do have to have them on your wrist in order to be on the court. Um, so then that way the officials that are there know that you're a coach, especially if you don't have any kind of your logo team gear on, that's just going to different differentiate you versus a parent that's kind of trying to get on, um, or not. If you have an individual that's in there, the same is going to go for you. Thursday, you're going to check in. Um, let them know what class you are. They're alphabetized by class first. So if you're 6A, the teams are going to be in there, and then there's going to be singles and doubles. So just let whoever's checking you in know what class you are, um, because that's how they're set up in the box. Um, but other than that, um, so coaches, if you are playing Tuesday through Friday, hopefully, that wristband's got to stay on all four days. It should last all four days for you. Um, but anybody has any questions on that, let me know. Thank you. Um, and Shannon just referenced that you know, coaches, you need to have that wristband on so that the um, UST officials know who you are and our hired staff knows who you are. But now a lot of times that gets covered up with long sleeve. Um, and we did hear from a few officials last year that they struggled a bit to figure out who the coaches were um, because some were just wearing plain non-school apparel or frankly, some of you 
to, to those of us who are older, you look like you could still be in high school. Um, so we ask if you if there's time and you can, please introduce yourself as a coach or coaches to the USTA officials. So if they need to go talk to a coach about something, they just know who they're looking for. Uh, and if possible, you know, if you have a shirt that says Brainerd Tennis um, or even just Brainerd, um, if you wear that, that would help those officials versus just wearing a shirt that says Nike. Um, now, you don't have to go to your team, your school store and buy something, but um, it would be helpful if you would, would do that. Amy, I'd say it'd even be beneficial for them to tell the site managers and the or the table who the coaches are, maybe even bring them in and introduce just so that we know also. Yes. We pay that's attention to that also. Yes, please. Especially I would say assistants, because I think, yep. you know, some of the head coaches have been around for a while and, and the site managers already know who you are. Um, but if you can stop by the table at class A or the office area for double A and just, you know, say hi, identify yourself. Um, that just makes things a lot slicker if we need, if we need to find you. Thanks, Rick. All right, Shannon, you can go forward. Uh, how about, was there a ticketing slide? One back. After this one is, nope, go forward. I have between the coach identification and the behavior expectations. Maybe it's after. Okay, cl um, click after the behavior expectations. Okay, yeah, sorry, people. I, um, I printed off a copy of this. Um, We'll do the behavior expectations in a moment. Um, for team competition only, each school is sent four complimentary tickets. Those will be sent to the AED, if not this week, um, that would come on Monday. So four tickets to the AED, and that is meant to provide admittance for your AED or administrative supervision, which we would expect. And we would also like that person to check in at the MSHSL table, just so we know who you are. Um, and you could also use be, with those four, you know, maybe you have two administrators coming. Um, that's where you could use that. Um, a ticket for a fourth coach, if you choose to, you can use it for your bus driver, you can use it really for whomever you want, but that will come from the AD. Um, AD is just a heads up. You're gonna get, I know this is confusing, but you're actually gonna get the tickets for both sites. Um, I know you probably don't need them for both sites, um, but it's just easier in our system to do it that way. So when you suddenly get the class A tickets um, and you haven't seen the double A ones, just hold out a few minutes before contacting us, but the double A ones would be coming or vice versa. That was a little confusing for people last year. Um, and the idea of those tickets would be so that you have an administrative rep there to assist us in communicating behavior expectations to your coaches and players. Hopefully they already know those, but also to your fans. Um, this especially applies if you have student fans who just aren't used to coming to tennis. Um, but they hear your team made it to state, so they want to come cheer. Um, please communicate with them proper tennis cheering and tennis etiquette so they don't just pull out their their hockey cheering etiquette. Okay, Shannon, now you can go back to that behavior expectations. Thank you. Um, last year, yes, last school year, we convened a series of um, groups with students and those groups of students have come up with the following be behavior expectations. Um, administrators, I think you've seen this in the lead meetings and in your AD's dashboard, but these are good ones to please communicate specifically with your fans. And you can, again, find those on your AD dashboard. Uh, there's always questions about court rental. For that, you'll have to uh, contact the sites directly. Shannon and I don't do any of that through our office, thankfully. Um, teams can rent court time through the Monday of the state tournament. Individuals may rent court time. Now this is assuming it's available, 
they might be booked up. Um, there's there's no guarantee of that, but um, you can make those phone calls. Um, for those of you who coach boys and girls double A, um, I believe the U of M outdoor courts are working again. Last spring, they had some fences blow down um, in a storm, but I was over there for a football game a few weeks ago and there was a tennis match going on. So outdoor would be another rental opportunity for double A. But they need to contact the U yes. ahead of time to set that up and just not go out there and hit without their permission. So Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, you can go to the next one. Um, match details. This is this has not changed, but for those of you who are new to this tournament, um, the tournament slash site manager will meet with the coaches and players 15 minutes prior to warm-ups, and that'll take place right on court. Uh, this is important because I know a few people weren't happy with this last year, but we did tell you ahead of time, the coach, the court assignments might have to be adjusted to accommodate extended matches. So, um, you know, if you have a parent who just assumes their kid's going to be playing on this certain court, um, there's a chance that they might not be playing on that certain court um, because this is all just kind of a big Tetris game so we can get through the tournament as efficiently as possible. Um, at that pre-match meeting, um, our management will provide um, a can of balls to, to, for each match. Um, and as stated earlier, um, we will have USTA roving officials. If you have any questions or concerns, you can certainly talk to them and or site management. Uh, uniform rules, uh, the uniforms must be the school approved uniform uh, and that applies to individuals and doubles as well. Uh, the participants should be in the exact same uniform with the exception that different logos are okay. So um, if your team is wearing you know, a whatever shirt um, and some of them want to wear black skorts and some are wearing black shorts and they have different brands, um, it would be okay if they are different brands. So one player could have Adidas black shorts and one player can have Under Armour black shorts, but then they still should all be black shorts. Um, and hats are okay if appropriate. We will have certified athletic trainers at both sites. Um, all of those positions are filled. So we are expecting to have somebody um, at each site throughout the tournament. And there is always an AED on site. Hopefully we don't need it, but just it's important for everybody to know we have it. A, a couple reminders of bylaws that, that might apply here I mean, all of the bylaws apply here, but these actually might come up as questions in the next few days. Um, if you have any players who are currently ineligible, um, just a heads up, they must be fully eligible to be on the bench or in the playing area or as part of the award ceremony. So if somebody is ineligible, you can bring them with you and they can be a part of your team from the cheering section, um, but they would not be part of the tournament per se, if they're ineligible. Um, and just a reminder with, with the, the tournament starting on Tuesday, no organized team activities on Sundays. Um, if some of your kids go decide to hit the ball themselves, that's totally fine, but it shouldn't be something that the coach is arranging or the coach is telling them to do, or the coach um, you know, is setting up what park to go to at what time. Um, if the kids go and do that on their own, that's fine, but there should be no organized team activities. Oh, that looks, that brings me, I think, to the end. Um, are there any questions, did we have any questions in chat that we didn't get to? Or if somebody has a really, oh, wait, I saw one up there. there oh yeah, and I just want to, oh, go ahead, Amy. I just wanted to reiterate, um, the, the question of bringing food into inner city. Um, yeah, so completely different. Double A, you can't bring in food or drink because there are concessions being sold already. Class A at inner city, there are no concessions. There might be a pop machine, um, but otherwise there's no concessions. So you can bring food and drink in there. Um, 
as administrators know, we'd like to try to be as consistent as possible for all of our tournaments, but that just using two, two sites with very different uh, setups, um, we, we're, we can't be consistent on that rule. There, um, there was a message about check-in time. Um, we don't have anywhere specific on our site that you have to check in like ahead of time. We just recommend getting there, I, I would say at least an hour so you can check in, get your stuff, especially on day one and enough time to get your girl ready to go. So we don't have a specific one that says you have to check in 60 minutes before or 45 minutes before or anything like that. Um, and if you happen to be really early, but there's teams or individuals who are playing before you trying to check in, um, we request you step aside and let them get checked in. Um, you know, the teams that are checking in for an eight o'clock uh, match, if you're not there, if you're not playing until 10, but you get there at 6.55, let's let those um, 8 a.m. teams check in first. Um, Shannon, can you pull up on the um, participating school guide um, question uh, about a bag size restriction for spectators? Um, yes, there is one, um, although I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, Shannon can pull it up and double check, or I will. If you go to the MSHSL website and click on girls tennis, which I am doing right now. Um, there's a spectator guide um, right under the, it's a state tournament information. Um, there is a spectator guide and that would be right in there. And yes, the bag policy, U of M bag policy, the bags cannot exceed 12 inches by 12 inches. So you're not restricted to clear and it doesn't need to be, you know, a tiny clutch. Um, bags needed for medical purposes or babies um, are subject to search and will be tagged. Um, so, and really all the bags are subject, subject to search. Um, but yeah, 12 by 12, which, you know, gives you a little bit more space than just bringing in a, a tiny clutch purse for the day. Um, One of the questions was on bus drivers as well. Your bus drivers get in complimentary. They just have to check in with the pass gate person. Oh, um, they do? They don't mm -hmm. have to use one of your four tickets? Nope. Oh, well, there you go. There, that's a better answer than what I gave you. <laughs> Shannon knows some of these details more than I do in that um, she is assists for a lot of different ticketed activities. I run a lot of non-ticketed activities with, with my fine arts in there too. Um, Rick, Eric, did you have anything else you wanted to add or other tournament management? I'm seeing a shaking head no. Um, if anybody has a question and you really just want to ask us right now, you can feel free to stick on. Um, and once we clear everybody out, we can um, make you a co-host and unmute you. Otherwise, feel free to contact any of us in the next few days. And again, go to your coach's dashboard or AD's dashboard and core through that participating school guide. And we are really looking forward to our tournament next week. We are gonna be the first fall tournament for the MSHSL kicking off. So um, we're, excited, we're excited to get this all underway. And congratulations once again. And you are free to go unless you wanna stay for a question.